Hi, this is Kevin from the Beekeeper's Corner Podcast. Today we're going to make a spiced mead. We're going to use an Ambrosia Farm Spice Mead Kit that my son picked up at a Renaissance Fair. I'll go through the process of how to make it, what's included in the kit, and how to put it together and how long it will take to get your mead before you can drink it. So let me tell you what was in the packet. First you have the instruction set that tells you how to put it together. You have the spice package in a little bag. It's all mixed and ready for you. It says what's in it. It's uh, crystallized ginger, cinnamon, rose hips, nutmeg, and you also have the yeast packet that came in the kit. It comes with a little bit of muslin and a rubber band for you to secure it. This is an old wine jar that we have. We're using tap water. It recommends you use bottled water, but the bottled water, or the water we have at the house here is really good. You need two cups of honey. There's a little more in this container, but we'll use two cups of it. And then equipment wise, it helps to have something to measure everything out. I need a jar or a pot to simmer the ingredients to get them ready so that they'll have the flavoring. Of course you need a funnel to get it in the jar and everything should be around 70 to 75 degrees when you put the yeast in to make sure that you activate the yeast properly. So I have a thermometer here that I can measure everything. I've washed my hands scrupulously and all of the equipment. You want to make sure everything is clean before you get started. So the first thing to do is measure out your water. You'll need 12 cups of water. You're going to divide that. Three cups are going to go in here and the remainder will go in the jug. You're going to measure out two cups of honey. You could use the water in the jug, which is room temperature, to swish out the bottle to make sure you get as much honey as possible. We'll go ahead and measure out and we'll start to simmer our mixture for about 10 minutes. So we've got three cups of water in my pot and just bringing it up to the simmer I'm going to add the spice mixture. So the mixture has just started to come to a simmer right now. We're going to cover it off and we'll set the timer for 10 minutes. I'm going to turn this down a little bit here so it doesn't start to boil. While we were simmering the spice packet, we heated up the honey a little bit. We took its temperature and it was just below 70 degrees. We put it in a water bath to soak and now it's at 73 degrees. We need two pounds of honey or three cups equivalent and this has a measure in it and what I'm going to do right now is just pour this right in until I have three cups. And that's three cups right there. Now we'll take this and pour it into our container. And then we'll use some hot water to rinse it out and make sure we get all the honey so none goes to waste. Three cups of honey going in. Ideally you're going to do this during the summertime. It's January while we're shooting this and everything is kind of cooler. In the summertime it would be a little bit warmer, 70, 80 degrees. This would run right through. I've got a good majority of it. I'll get some warm water and rinse this out and go ahead and flush it through. Make sure I get all the honey out of here and don't waste a drop. Okay, the 10 minutes is up and the simmering spice water liquid is cooling off. We've measured this temperature, we've had to take some water out and put it back in. We got it to 73 degrees. So now I'm going to rinse this and pour it in and then I'm going to add the rest of this to my jug and get it prepped for when we're going to pour the cinnamon spice mixture in.
I have my nine cups of water in here. I've rinsed my honey out. I've rinsed my funnel out. All I need to do now is add the strained spice mixture and this will be ready to go. I'm going to wait for that to come to temperature about 70 something degrees because we don't want to kill the yeast when we put it in. So right now we'll have to wait until that other piece gets to temperature before we can do our next step. So before I add the spice mixture, the instructions indicate that I'm going to shake this really well to combine the honey and the liquid, the water. I'm going to turn it upside down because all the honey is settled on the bottom. I'll keep shaking this and eventually we'll add the spice mixture to it. So this is at 70 something degrees. This mixture that we heated on the stove has cooled down to 70 degrees. We put it in the refrigerator and then cooled it off to room temperature. We're going to add this to this through the funnel. But first I'm going to shake this up. One thing to note about making mead, this is all you have to do. If you took raw honey and put it in with water, one part honey to five, let me make sure I get this, I say this right. One portion of honey, four portions of water. So if you had one cup of honey, you'd put four cups of water in it, five cups total. The natural yeast in the honey would make mead. You would just have to shake it every day, eventually it would ferment and then it would stop and over time uh, you would have mead just that way. We're going to add some yeast to get it to ferment that way. So alright, let me shake this real quick and then I'll add this. We'll put the yeast in it. No shaking after you put the yeast in and we'll cap it off and let it be. Now cap it off is a relative term. You don't cap it, cap it because it's going to build pressure and it'll blow it off. Uh, we have to get something to cap. So for right now, we're just going to put like a cheesecloth or something over it. Eventually, you want to get one of those corks with the tube that comes up that lets gas out but doesn't let oxygen in. Uh, we'll have to go get one of those. We don't have one for now. But let me get this uh, shaken up real quick. I see no honey setting on the bottom, so that's perfect. my funnel. Now here you're going to pour all the gritchkis in. You want all this stuff to go in the mixture. That's going to flavor it. Tap them down. Let's see what we got. Nope, it's all clogged up. I have to grab a spoon and I'll put those in that way. But that's it, and then in a moment I will add. So thing, can I have a spoon? Thank you. You can see what the spices look like. Again, my fingers are really clean. I've been washing my hands the whole time. My expectation is that this stuff will settle in the bottom. And then when you go to rack this off, take it out, put it in separate bottles or drink it, you could filter this out. It'll settle like sediment at the bottom. I don't want to lose any of this goodness, so I'm going to make sure I get it all in here. Okay. I'm going to give it a quick shake. Combine all this. And that's it. Now I'm going to put the yeast in, and I am not going to shake it after the yeast, and I'm done. I'll cover it off. I have a cheesecloth like piece of material that I could put over top. Thank you, thank. With a rubber band. So I'll put the yeast in and I'll put this over, so let, why not talk about it, let's do it. Now what I know about this is if it's too hot, the liquid, it will kill the yeast, and if it's too cold, the yeast will not activate. So you want to make sure you get it 
around 70, 75 degrees. A little bit tricky opening this. In goes the yeast. And it's going to sit right up on top. I am going to give it one turnover because I get yeast all stuck up inside the neck. And now it's all run down. Okay, take the lid off. This is a piece of cloth to prevent anything from going in and a rubber band. That's it. So now you can see what the final product looks like. It's been about 10, 12 days since we've created this. This is a little cloudy right now, but when we processed it, it was clear. I shook it up when I brought it back up here to shoot this segment. There's still some froth up on the top. The yeast is still processing the honey inside. I've tasted it. It's sweet. It's good. Uh, it'll continue to get drier if I let it go. I like where it's at, so we're going to take it out of here. Uh, using a siphon and put it in its final resting place which will be this bottle. I wanted to talk real quickly about the difference between this which is a short mead and a long mead. In a short mead you use a smaller proportion of honey to water and a quicker acting yeast and once you ferment what you're doing in one stage you're going to immediately consume the product within four to six weeks. What you're going to do is take this and put it in a refrigerator and keep it cool which will keep the yeast from activating any further and then you could drink it off. It will spoil in time so you're going to want to drink this one relatively quickly. The difference between a long mead and the short mead, a long one uses a higher proportion of honey, a stronger finishing yeast that can go through a bunch of different cycles and you can ferment this and leave it sit aside for up to a year. A shorter mead is better for me because I want to drink this right away. Um, sweet or dry depends on the fermentation. As the yeast consumes the sugar, it creates more alcohol and it also gives you a drier product. So if you really want something dry like a wine, you can let it keep going. The one thing that I would caution you is the more this ferments, the more it could potentially have that byproduct of the yeast create a mustiness through the center of it. So. Uh, I would caution towards make it a little bit sweeter and don't let it go the full distance. The instructions say refrigerate your meat after bottling. The cold shuts down the yeast as I said and it will last four to six weeks. If you take it out of the refrigerator and put it in the heat the yeast will reactivate. So if you're transporting it somewhere whatever keep it chilled. Given that it's February when I'm making this I don't have a concern about that. Um, there is a possibility though, even when you have it chilled and in its final bottle, that it will continue to build a little bit of pressure and you'll pop a cork and it could fizz. And if you handle it roughly, it will spray out like champagne, so be careful for that. Uh, if you want to know more about this particular product, I, I don't have any affiliation whatsoever with Ambrosia Farm, but they do have a lot of information and you could buy kits to try this. It's relatively simple. AmbrosiaFarm.com and they have a great FAQ there that you can find out information about this product. There's a book from the 1600s, which is the origin to where they've uh, sourced some of their recipes. So it's pretty interesting just to take a look at their site. And you can find that book since it's freely available. And I went and took a look at it. Uh, very interesting recipes in there that gives you ideas if you wanted to take this a little bit further. So I'm going to get to work in racking this off taking it out and siphoning it into this bottle and then I'll show you what the final product is and we'll wrap it up. Okay we finished siphoning it off we put it in two separate bottles we're gonna have some guests that wanted to try this so I put it in a nicer bottle this one's for us we're gonna put it in the refrigerator uh, one thing that I noticed as we were uh, siphoning it out was that there were little chunks still floating through the metal so we had to siphon it and then strain it so we strained it with this this is a honey filter that we have when we're taking honey out of the hives. It's got a fine mesh and we just put it through that. I'm guessing this will probably still settle a little bit but that's okay. Um, Sharon, let's try a taste. You go first. Mm. 
It's good. Sweet. It's good. It's got a very uh, cinnamony, clovey kind of taste to it. So yeasty. Could taste the yeast. You could taste the yeast. It's probably still kicking. So you know what? It's all good. But you, earthy, earthy flavor. Yeah, it's it is sweet though, which I like. I didn't want it to be really dry. I want to be able to taste the honey, and underneath you can taste it. I, I taste a strong sense of clove, but it's pretty good. So we'll put this in the refrigerator. It's got four to six weeks before we should finish it off, and I think we'll be okay with that. So thanks for watching, and uh, there you go. Meat right at home. Short meat. So you're going to start with 12 cups of water. You'll take three cups out and put it in the pot here and add this to the simmer and the rest is going to go in the jug. You want to make sure you use 70 degree, 75 degree water as I said. We're using tap water here because we have well water from our property which is really, it tastes good, but they recommend you use spring water. So you're going to start with 12 cups. <laughs> So you're going to start with 12 cups of water and you're going to take three <laughs> Okay, so we're all set and I've invited a guest in to <laughs> go look over and you're like, all right, three, two, why don't I call you in? No, I'm not in. coming in. I'm in already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on. All right, ready? Potent stuff. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Should I mention that we filtered it or not? <laughs> I guess I have to now, because that's got to go in the blooper reel. Yes, you should mention you filtered it. Measure twice. Cut once. once. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, ready? Mm. Can you get serious for a minute here? <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Three, yeah. <laughs> Come on. I got other things to do. Yeah. Like. How much of that did you have to drink? <laughs> Get a little loopy. Why is this down so far? Wasn't there more <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. So I've invited a guest in. We finished filtering this off. <laughs> right, let's shut that off, huh? <laughs>